Hello YouTube, I'm Boing the Gamer and welcome to my channel where I play video games and create geeky videos. Today, Force of Nature 2 Ghost Keeper, a first impressions video. Thanks to Creativo and Key Mirror, I've got a game key to activate and play on Steam. And so, I can provide you all with an honest first impressions video and find out if this game might be a good buy for you. Now the game combines several genres like survival, sandbox, action, adventure, RPG, strategy and even resource management. It's a lot but it's a pretty big game. In a magical open world you must venture into the unknown and explore, gather resources, craft items, build a settlement, fight enemies and solve the mystery surrounding the force of nature stone. Force of Nature 2 offers single player gameplay and online co-op up to 4 players. While I haven't been able to test out the multiplayer, I do think it's a great addition to the game from what I've seen, heard and read online. Yeah, even I do my research folks. So the story goes that the gods of this fantasy world created a magic stone so they might travel to other realms. As their world was empty and dying they needed to repopulate and so they did with all kinds of different species. The world knew peace and harmony for a thousand years until the stone was destroyed. And that's where you pop in, you are summoned to clean up the mess and fix whatever is left. Along the way you'll gather a lot of resources and craft quite a lot. I mean crafting is really detailed and it might even scare people away from this game. You know crafting requires you to create small tools in order to create bigger items which then lets you create bigger constructs like houses and stuff like that. The amount of work and effort you have to put in this game might scare the casual gamer away. Well I love this genre, you know, the survival build and craft type of games. However, this one is a lot, even for me. Even in those first few hours of gameplay I already experienced that grindy feeling, you know. But I do think the co-op will solve a lot of problems, as I honestly feel the game's full potential lies within the teamwork made possible by the multiplayer. The game offers pretty simple character creation. After this you kinda wake up in your creepy garage, battle a wild invading raccoon, fix up a broken wall and get teleported to this random fantasy kingdom because a magic stone appeared before you. All of this serves as a quick tutorial to the game, which basically just taught you to gather stuff, battle an enemy and build something thing in a cheesy way. Anyway, controls can be adjusted and settings can be tinkered with to get yourself ready and explore this new world. Once portaled you find yourself on the beach with several resources to gather and an objective log to sorta of guide you on what to do next. You'll gather stuff, craft items and build several creations to progress the game and your character. Something you'll be repeating quite a lot. So the visuals are good and you either like or dislike the camera view. But yeah, no real complaints about the actual graphics. Early on you craft a campfire to cook food. You create weapons and tools and build several stations to discover even more stuff to craft. Like yeah, I played a good amount of hours and I just remained at the beach. Not cause I enjoyed the view or a quick swim, but I felt like everything I needed was right here and somehow the game wanted me to stay. Like I don't know, with games like this I want to explore and find a perfect spot to settle. Nonetheless, I did set out to explore. I've encountered wild foxes and boars which provided tougher battles than expected. Mainly because I think the combat was kinda clunky, especially at the early stages. But getting through those early stages rewards magic, which might turn combat pretty interesting. Beside the fantasy realm, there's also several in-game menus to explore. Beside the objective log I spent a lot of time switching different crafting menus searching what to build next, which isn't always an easy find. Anyway there's also a day and night cycle with different weather conditions, which is always a nice touch to any game. Beside gathering and crafting items or constructing buildings, you can also get into farming, grow a crops and hold animals. So yeah, even at the first hours of gameplay there's a lot of crafting and building. But here's a fun fact, you can move items you've built and placed on the map and relocate them within certain range, which is a pretty nice touch to this game. There's a lot to explore, whether it's a nice forest, a dark dungeon or a sunny beach, there's a lot of biomes to discover here. There's even magic to unlock and spells to learn which turn things pretty interesting when they help you out in combat versus different enemies or bigger boss fights. Again, you can tell from the start, this is a game that will keep you occupied for hours and hours. 
Force of Nature 2 Ghost Keeper is one of the bigger survival craft and building RPGs out there. The detail of crafting is pretty awesome. You'll need to make small tools to create several items in order to create bigger constructs. Gathering the many resources and crafting everything seems fun at first, but the detailed projects turn in a grindfest rather quickly. Sure, it's that kind of game, but after a few hours I already got that grindy feeling, and that's coming from a guy playing several similar titles. Anyway, if you're into this genre, then this game is a rather cheap and good buy on Steam. From the first bits I've played, I could tell this is going to be one long adventure. So yeah, my first impressions are simply good. A cheap buy on Steam that offers detailed crafting, exploring a fantasy realm with some clunky combat but fun character progress, alone or in multiplayer co-op. So how do you feel about Force of Nature 2? Are you willing to travel into this digital world to explore, build and possibly save the realm? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy my videos, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button, which really helps the channel out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, YouTube.